Hello internet people, it's me again, Judith, with a cold. I've been sick this week, so if my voice sounds like crap, you know what to blame. Um, today I want to talk to you about a bit about Canadian feminism, because I was on a French-Canadian feminist Facebook group. Wow, that's hard to say. Um, because I'm actually French-Canadian. And that's, that's the silly little accent you always hear. And if you've been wondering what it is, that's what it is. C'est du français. Um, and long story short, we got to talk about uh, Bill C-16, which for those of you who don't know, Bill C-16 was pushed a couple of years ago, and it was about protecting the right of transgender people, um, especially about using the pronouns which they want people to use by while referring to them. So if you have a trans woman and she want to be called she or her, well, now under law, because this bill is passed, it's a crime for you to keep referring to her as a male and calling him he or he. It's a crime. Even And even if they have some of those made-up pronouns like xer or ill or whatever, because there's so many of them, well, if they say you have to call me xer, you have to. You're a criminal under federal law if you don't. And you might have heard, if you're a fan, especially if you're a fan of Jordan Peterson, you might have heard of this bill, because that's the bill that he opposed. Um, and it, he didn't oppose it because he, he was offended by the idea that trans people had right. No, the, the trans issue for him was completely aside, all those facts. For him, it was about a government overreach. It was about the government telling you what words you can or cannot use under the penalty of law. It, it, it's basically the government controlling your speech. Now, think about that for a minute. You know, if you know anything about Peterson, you'll understand why he's not a fan of such overreach by, you know, uh, politically, um, by a set of government who, who play identity politics and they're pushing like these sketchy uh, feminist theory into laws and it, it sort of got me thinking about the power that feminism has on society and that's not something people really notice but i've noticed something like especially in canada especially in the province i'm in which is quebec which french again um People at large here basically understand that women are oppressed. They really think so. And that uh, we live under a patriarchal system that's designed for male to dominate women. And that um, only women experience sexism. Men don't. Apparently, so I've been mansplained by a couple of male feminists, men don't experience sexism. They explain like, discrimination or you know slight disadvantages but not sexism apparently and only men experience privileges women have no privilege because you know they're sexism all the time against them so and and then i'm like does this any of this make any sense um and i got thinking like our prime minister justin trudeau he's a proud outspoken feminists. He speak about equality, which is the feminist concept of equality, all the time. It's really important to him. That's why when he got elected, he made sure that his cabinet was going to be 50-50 female-male representation to again push this idea of mostly equality of outcome. And then thirdly, uh, under both provincial and federal government, you have public organization in French, it's called, if, if I'm not mistaken, le Ministère de la Condition Féminine, which is like the Ministry for Female Condition, which is a whole branch of the government, which is publicly funded, by the way, and run by the government, that is there to push feminist theory and narrative onto the public. It's basically a feminist propaganda machine to promote the idea of like 
again, feminist concept of equality, equality of outcome, the, the, and to, to, to let the people know about the gender pay gap and all this feminist bullshit that's been debunked. But, like, publicly funded, pushed by the government, for the people. And then those theories, exemplified by Bill C-16, are made into law. And, and remember, laws are what actual institutionalized power is. So those feminist theory have such huge institutionalized power, yet we're still oppressed. And I, I was like, we have these four things, and then feminists have the nerve of telling women, and even men have the nerve of telling me that as a woman, I'm oppressed. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, and, and remember another thing, like, they have all these political power, but before you can have any political power, you need to have social power first. You need to have all m m the majority of the public, not all, but the majority of the public on your side, so that you can then try to gain political power. That's how the suffragette were able to demand change after, you know, years, if not decades of protest. They changed the public's opinion about women's right until men were like, okay, sure, sounds fair enough, let's give them the right. And then, okay, that's what women have, they have all this social, political power within the government, and look at the other side, what do the men have? They, they, they don't have it as good. As, as as they could, as feminists pretend that they have it. I mean, they, they deal with a lot of, especially male-focused issue, a like lot of depression, a lot of um, um, death due to the job, job choices. They, they deal with the biased court system, maybe a little bit in, in, less in Quebec, because from what I've noticed in Quebec, we push this idea of equality a lot more. Like I've talked, I think I've talked about it in my other videos. Like I was raised in the 80s, and this idea that women could do anything that they want to was really prevalent. So in Quebec, I think people are especially open to this idea of equality. But still, things are not perfect for men, and they do experience sexism, and they do experience discrimination, disadvantage, and, and they don't have all the privilege that feminist things they do. I mean, they lack repro reproductive rights, for example. Um, divorce laws are still stupid. Like, why would men want to get married nowadays? I don't know. And then... It, uh, feminists present these ideas to the public so well they have com convinced the public at large that they're right, that the feminist mindset is the right one to have, that if you're not a feminist, then why are you for inequality? Like, no, oh, <laughs> I dropped my papers. Um, like, you're not for inequalities if you're not a feminist, you just, you just don't subscribe to their bullshit. That's all what it means. Like, at this point, feminists are just acting like the spoiled, abusive girlfriend. Like, they have the, the boyfriend just giving her everything she wants, all the toys, all the trips around the world, everything, and she's amassing everything, but she's seeing, she's looking, there's something shiny and bright that she doesn't have, and she's like, I want that thing, give me that thing. If you don't give me that thing, I'll tell everybody you're oppressing me, and then I'm experiencing sexism, and everything is men's fault, so give it to me. And it's it's, these people are my contemporary, and it frustrates me so much right now that this, this is what the narrative that's being pushed on people, and it's not based on truth. Like, what I'm trying to tell you is as truthful as I can be from the knowledge that I've gathered. Like, it's really important to me, like, to tell you what's real and what's true. Feminists don't care about that. They're trying to push an idea that women are oppressed so they can get more. That, that's what they want. You know, I'm left thinking, like, everybody's on your side. 
the, the system isn't oppressing you. So what do you want? Well, feminists want power and privileges. That's what they're fighting for nowadays. There's, there's nothing else to fight for. Unless you think like a man making a little sexist comment at work is a sign of a bigger deal of male domination over women. No, it's not. It's a guy with a shitty sense of humor. That That's all there is to it. There's no conspiracy at large to oppress you. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say it, but I'm gonna say it. And I think it's it's easy for me to say these things because I'm not really interested in power. I'm I'm not. It's it's not really. What am I going to do with it? Enslave humanity? Maybe I don't know. Uh, and privileges. I already have privileges. What more do you want? When are going? Are you going to be satisfied with what you have? Like lack of satisfaction, lack of gratitude for what you have. It's what's fueling it. Well, that's my theory, but it's shared by a lot of people too. That's what's fueling a lot of anxiety and depression people have nowadays. They they go on social media and you see people having perfect life and they're thinking, oh, wow, I'm not having this life. So well, there must be something wrong with me. You know, no, you have a job, you have a girlfriend, you have friends, you have a roof under your house, you have food in the fridge. You have everything you need to be happy. Like, stop comparing yourself to other people because you think these other people have the perfect life. All, all you're doing when you're saying that is you're admitting that you don't know what these people's life is about. You're just imagining what their life is like. That's what feminists are doing with men. They have this vision in their head that men have perfect lives and that that's the ideal to obtain and that if we had equality we would be as satisfied and as men are and we wouldn't experience sexism and that's not the reality of things at all so that's pretty much it that's what canadian feminism is like you have all the power social and political what the hell more do you want when are you going to pretend that you have it hard? You don't have it that hard. Canada is constantly on the top five or top ten of the best country in the world. Things can always get better, but not because you can work at bettering something. That means you can't appreciate what you have now. You can't appreciate things because you're resentful and angry. Because you keep looking at what other other people are having and you don't have it and then you, you whine like a child like stop it stop wanting to have so much power enjoy what you have you have it so good and that's that's what i'm gonna say because my voice is going uh, so <laughs> thank you for sticking up with me i know i go on rants all the time and i do appreciate um, give me your likes, I feed on likes, give me your support, share my videos, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much, bye!